hey, this is no, I haven't covered anything strictly Nintendo in some time, but the Nintendo Direct just aired, and it's quite a doozy. Jumping straight into it, Super Mario RPG Remake, what timeline are we in? I ain't mad. This is amazing. The Geno fans who want him in Smash are absolutely losing their minds. The people who make Smash mods are even more excited. <laughs> and then a new Princess Peach led game? Like Super Princess Peach from yesteryear? Okay. Okay. And a Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon port to the Switch? Also very nice. As I recall, the original Luigi's Mansion is not on the Switch. So I guess it would be nice if that was put on there as well. Not that I'm looking a gift horse in the mouth. Don't get me wrong, I'm excited to see Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon being put on parry with its prequel and sequel. But given what we are now going to have with Pikmin, I suppose it would be nice to have the ability to play the whole series on one console. And on that note, Pikmin 1 and 2 being released on the Switch. What was funny is my brother was actually just lamenting about the fact that Pikmin 1 and 2 are not available on the Switch. Because our younger sister, it was her birthday, and we had noticed that she was watching videos of Pikmin gameplay. So we thought it would be, like, cool to be like, oh, did you want to play the games? But it's like, don't have a GameCube or a Wii to easy access to it. So th right now I'm looking at like the Nintendo page because I couldn't remember everything that was in it. And it dawned on me that <laughs> uh, people were highlighting before this that Atlas had sort of accidentally leaked that there was going to be a Nintendo Direct because they had posted a Persona 3 Reload video that seems to leak that it is in fact actually coming to the Nintendo Switch, whereas in its initial trailer didn't have that. That it was going to be like a mirror of what happened last time, where Persona 3, 4, and 5 were not shown to be on the Switch. But then later, Nintendo Direct confirmed that they are coming. With that in mind, the assumption would have been that it would have been at this Direct, but I just realized it wasn't. Persona 5 Tactica, which we already knew was coming to the Switch, I believe, was there. But the one thing that people were using as evidence to suggest that a Nintendo Direct was happening well, wasn't even there. Huh. A lesser mention to, uh, what was it, Myth Force? That's a cool idea. First person roguelike based on Saturday morning cartoons. That's exactly the kind of thing that they put in there just for me. What else we got? Dragon Quest Monsters looks kind of neat. Like Dragon Quest trying to take on uh, literally making Persona, or rather Shin Megami Tensei. And a little bit of like Pokemon. Like essentially just their own spin on the monster collecting game. I can always appreciate the idea that some other game companies are trying to make games in this genre because I feel that Pokemon has gone uncontested for too long. Now, I don't expect them to be successful enough to actually compete with Pokemon, but it's always nice to see competition. Pikmin 4 looking nice. WarioWare Move It looks to be like a sequel to Smooth Moves. Now, I did not care for the other WarioWare game. Even from the trailer, I never even bought the game. I was not interested in it. And hearing that it was very middling after the fact anyway, validated that thought. But Smooth Moves, WarioWare Smooth Moves on the Wii, was a game that me and my brother really enjoyed. It was in the formative years of our lives where we had our Nintendo Wii, and that was like the Wario game. Yeah, we've had some of the other Wario games, but there was no other Wario game that we played as much as that one. This one, to me, I could be wrong, it looks like a sort of follow-up to that, in the way that WarioWare Smooth Moves has you holding the Wii Remote in particular positions and playing mini-games with that uh, position in mind. 
and Wario Remove It appears to be doing the same thing. So I'm very excited about that. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's booster course pass, including even more characters this time around. Three instead of just adding one. Very happy to see that. I won't lie, after the Super Mario RPG thing earlier in the Direct, I was starting to, like, think that they were going to announce, like, Geno or something for it. That'd be interesting to see if they could make that happen. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. I, I admit I am impressed with it. I feel that Nintendo seems to have understood that just making another new Super Mario Brothers game is not going to cut it. What's impressive about it to me is the way that they have made Mario look. It seems that that alongside like the way Sonic Superstars looks and like Mega Man 11, that's many of these game companies have realized that when you're making the 3D, 2D games, that you need to make it so that the character still looks almost like a 2D sprite in the way that they are standing, the way they are positioned. When you compare the way that Mario stands in the new Super Mario Bros. games where he's mostly standing straight forward and he's like kind of shifting side to side versus this where he's almost at like a side angle looking forward like at a fighting game. That understanding is what leads to this very satisfying graphical look and I'm very happy to see it on display here. This is not something that I thought that they would actually do with Mario because I really thought they were just going to like keep doing new Super Mario Brothers and never give it a second thought. This looks cool. I admit I'm not fully understanding what the the gimmick here is. You, you get a uh, an item that makes everything into like a crack house. I'm sure it's fine, but I'm a little bit confused. I'm more interested in the fact that uh, you got Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Yoshi, and Daisy. Now you got a game. Now we're cooking. What I also find really compelling is that, like, a week or two ago, Sonic Superstars gets announced, and the world explodes. A new Sonic 2D game with three models, with the physics provided by the Sonic Mania engine, with four playable characters, and co-op multiplayer looking to be probably one of the best games that the franchise ever produced. And now we have Super Mario Bros. Wonder here on a new 2D game with 3D models, multiple playable characters, local co-op, looking to be a revitalization of the games. For the first time in probably, if we're being fair, since Sega was in the console market, I think we could have a friendly competition of which one is better, Mario or Sonic. Now, if we're being honest, it's probably going to be Mario, because Mario always puts out those numbers. But honestly, if we're just talking about the game quality, prior to Super Mario Wonder, I was under the impression that when people were suggesting that there was going to be a new 2D, 2D Mario game, it was just going to be new Super Mario Brothers, and I'm like, oh, Sonic might actually have a chance. Now it's, now it's not as likely. But, I'm still in it for Sonic Superstars, but as a person who also likes Mario. I'm winning both sides. So for the people who actually want to have toxic discussion online about which is better, you could argue all day about this. And I applaud you for having the tenacity and the endurance to do so. Or, be like me. Enjoy the fact that you have two promising looking games coming out and play them both. Which on that note, one thing I wasn't expecting was the announcement of, I think, Christian Whitehead's new game. I think I was just making mention of it in one of my previous videos. It might have been just been my last video. They had discussions about doing another one, but I guess they fell out. They were not specific as to why. My personal suspicion is that, as I recall, I believe Christian Whitehead is working on a game of his own. Well, that got announced with a proper, like, reveal and everything. And, like, huh. I wasn't expecting it to be a 3D platformer. And the gameplay looks okay, but it's kind of hard to look at 
the design of the character feels a bit like much. I don't know. I'm not usually one to be all like a hater about it, but it feels a bit over designed. In the Sonic Superstars trailer in the direct, we got some other tidbits of information. One that I saw was another Chaos Emerald power that reveals hidden platforms. Very cool. Another thing was I think I saw briefly that Amy appeared to be able to do a second jump, which is cool. I saw a lot of people who were getting mad that Amy's being sort of shafted and not having a whole lot of unique aspects to her because she just has like a drop dash. But I think they're failing to see both A, when she does the drop dash, when she has to spin up with the hammer, I would speculate that that increases her hitbox, kind of like in the way that Sonic had the uh, insta-shield in Sonic 3, but it's bigger and not instantaneous. And secondly, in this trailer, she appears to be able to uh, do a second jump, which is kind of cool, because basically this means that playing as her probably means that it's going to be easier than Sonic, because you have the ability to increase your hitbox, so you're more likely to make contact with the enemies and defeat them, and you also have the, oops, I screwed up, second jump. That kind of tracks. I did notice that in the trailer they said there was going to be a whole new 12, I think it was 12 zones? Let me, let me check that real fast. Yeah, 12. 12 is a pretty, I think that's a pretty good amount. You know? So I want to say Sonic 3 and Knuckles might have been like 12 zones. Let's see. How many levels are in Sonic 3? Oh, okay. So Sonic 3 is only 6 zones. Sonic 3 and Knuckles is it 12? Okay, yeah, yeah. So with Sonic 3 and Knuckles, there's 14 zones, but 13 and 14 are just Death Egg Zone and the Doomsday Zone. So basically, Sonic Superstars aims to have a similar length as at least Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I wonder if Sonic Mania is also 12 zones, I can't remember. Okay, yeah, Sonic Mania is 13 zones considering the Egg Reverie Zone. But, so basically they, they have done more or less like the expected amount. Now, in my mind, I can't help but think, well, you're charging me $60 for 12 of these, you know? I personally like a little bit more, but it is a higher quality product. I'm probably still going to buy it. What do you guys think about all this? Let me know in the comments below. Which one are you probably going to pick up if you're only picking up one? If you're picking up both and you're based, let me know too. This is Noah. Nintendo Direct. See ya.